Hi guys, I'm Emily with Millie's Vines. I'm going to be doing my first video today. It's going to be an apartment tour, so um, quick PSA. We have um, new camera work, so bear with us there. Um, it's a little bit of a struggle, but this is my entryway. So this is a like $6 trellis we got from Home Depot. Super cool DIY we did, and then it's all thanks to the Soltex light. We might wear out a little bit focusing on the lighting there, but that definitely is key, along with the humidifier that is down underneath here. It's one of those Lavoite, I don't know how to say that, but it's a really nice one. Um, so typically I have that running, but we're a little lazy today. And then on this trellis we have philodendrons pretty much exclusively. So this first guy here is a philodendron Florida green. So this is one of those cool fuzzy petiole ones. Really nice. We got a new leaf on the way with some of that like sticky sap stuff. Very fascinating. Love that guy. And then over here we have two different kinds of philodendron iridescence. I'm gonna butcher saying that name, but um, this guy is just I think like the regular variety. It's like a pinkish red. Really cool. And then the guy next to it is the chocolate variety. So my understanding is this one is just a little bit darker. When you look at the stem here, it's kind of like a brownish color to the hot pink here. So super nice. These guys really like the trellis. When I first got this guy, it was probably like right about here. So pretty insane. And then down below, we have a Thamanthophyllum by Panifolium. I think these used to be Philodendron something, but they're reclassified. We got a new leaf on the way. It's going to be hard to see. Maybe one right there. And then one right here as well. This guy was outside, so he's not super happy. He's in rehab, but it's gonna get better. All right, guys, this is my living room. This is where the bulk of my plants are. This is a southwest facing light, so we get a lot of strong light in the afternoons. We're gonna start here with this massive guy that I've had for a couple years. I cannot recommend this plant enough, honestly. Um, this is a philodendron prince of orange. It's gorgeous, new leaf on the way. It is probably the easiest plant that I own. Um, you can let it dry out, you can overwater it, I mean don't do that, but super, it's just like the definition of happy to be here, so love that guy. And then this corner is kind of my bigger plants, so here we have my philodendron histatum, and if you zoom in on that, just the detail, the color, the silver gray, honestly is insane. Um, to the left of that we have a monstera. The last time I got a new leaf was October. Um, it is June of the next year, so I am over here just like waiting for a new leaf. So fingers crossed for me there. And then in the back we have a Sansevieria. It's a big one. This little, there's a new shoot here. I think there's a new shoot here as well. So this guy's new and look at how tall it is. That is insane. That guy also just really happy to be here. And then back here, we have a Diffibachia Tropical Snow, I believe. That is an easy plant, but they definitely need more water than you would think. Like, do not let that dry out, otherwise bottom leaves will drop. That's my recommendation on that one, but it is gorgeous. To me, that plant honestly looks fake. It is pretty insane. So those are my big guys over there. Now we're going to start with this little glass table. It reflects a ton of light. I do have to take a moment of silence for this beauty right here. I don't know if you can see, but there is new growth finally happening here. Um, happening here. I think it's like a cirrus spirellus or something. I honestly don't even know, but that thing is beautiful. And then this, one of my favorites as well, Philodendron Painted Lady. You can see why it's called Painted. It just looks insane. This is really pretty easy. Philodendrons, honestly, are probably one of my favorites species. Over here we have a handmade ceramic part, pot um, from a cool artist in Phoenix. This guy needs to be watered actually. He's really looking well. Thank you. But I have a string of something honestly here and a string of pearls. Kind of difficult but looks really cool. This guy, moment of silence, I just got this today. The dungeon, I don't even want to say it, Palladia, something like that. Super cool. Not wait for this one to kind of acclimate to my environment. And then this is probably my fastest growing Hoya, uh, Hoya Polinera. Really cool. It's like a fishtail almost. The veinations in this one is just beautiful. I love her. 
and we were gonna get a good zoom in on this Raptophora tetrasperma when I got this thing, no joke, probably right about here. It's grown, I mean, three feet, so my goal is for this to grow all the way up. I'm gonna branch off left and right. While we're up here too, we're gonna get an overview of this guy. This is an air plant. Uh, this is a local artist too. Super cool. And going in upwards as well. The lighting might be horrible here, so sorry in advance, but these are also Soltec. This is the Highland Track Light, I think. Pretty easy to install, honestly. It plugs in, it's on an automatic timer, which is super nice. And then we're gonna slowly come back to this table. This guy, love him. He doesn't look the best right now, but this is a, um, oh gosh, Tortum, Philodendron Tortum. This is the newest leaf. It looks insane. Um, so it's kind of cool. I'm growing this from like a tiny little stump, but patience is a virtue, so I'm gonna wait on that. This guy is a Hoya pubicalix, and I don't know why, but this thing is like so darkly pigmented. It is honestly beautiful. You can't tell how long this is, but there's there's a lot going on with that guy. He needs a trellis. And then over here, it might be kind of hard to see. Do you want to switch spots, maybe? So here, just a variety of things I don't know much about, honestly. This guy bloomed for me a while ago, like a year ago. It was super cool. Um, some type of Dishidia, like watermelon. This guy is super cool. Oh my goodness, it's just so symmetrical. It's insane. And then over here, this is another Philodendron. This is the Philodendron ooh, Black Cardinal, I believe. So super cool. You can see it's like deeply pigmented. So some of these are uh, kind of dark. They actually show that had pink corrugation at one time. Super crazy plant. And then over here we have some more. So the top right is going to be the Song of India. I wanted this plant for a long time since I saw Benji. He has a giant tree in one and it's just the prettiest thing I've ever seen. Um, to the top left of that we have some type of peperomia and if you zoom in these actually i think these are called spadexes something like that they're kind of like the blooms of peperomia they look insane i mean that thing is like an alien right now i love that pot that it's in it's super cool down below that we have the sipu blue super cool this reminds me of the philodendron piscatum silver sword it's kind of a silver blue plant it's just got really pretty detail and it's getting amazing sunlight so very happy for that plant. Down below, I actually got this plant in California, San Diego. This is just a philodendron heteraceum. I did put a like little propagation of a Brazil in here, so there's some variegation. Also getting really good light. And then down below, Synapsis exotica. Got a new leaf on the way. This actually was my grandma's plant, so no pressure, but doing my best to keep that thing happy. And then over here on this cute little red table, we have a um, philodendron xanadu. This guy is super cool. He's got a, not, a lot of new growth, They're very easy. I accidentally forget to water this thing all the time. He is a trooper. And then up above, we have more philodendrons. That's like a thing with me, I'm noticing. But philodendron, um, heteraceum, lemon lime, bright green. This is actually a super cool pot too. It's kind of this is another artist in Phoenix that did this super cool handmade work. Really nice. Probably should showcase that a bit more. But um, over here, I'm gonna come over here so we can get the um, This is a Synapsis Moonlight. So that one I got in Pennsylvania from Longwood Gardens actually, which was such a cool experience. But that guy's beautiful. I do let it dry out too much, so that's why it's kind of crispy to it but it's a work in progress and then the one to the left is the philodendron lichens when i got this guy it was probably like this long and over the past couple months and this thing is just like ready to go so really gorgeous plant and then the backs of these are kind of red it's like a velvety color. it's really really pretty and then probably the queen of this living room is going to be to our left this is my Syndapsis exotica, and she is lush. I mean, she has like different leaves coming out everywhere. New growth, new growth down below. 
few grow here. Again, very happy to be here. This plant to me is actually easier than the Argerius. This one's definitely lower maintenance. Um, it's a gorgeous plant. And then just look at the size of the tree's leaves. They're a giant, as you can see right there. And then the last thing we will show is the big plant over there. That's the only spot in the living room that doesn't get too much lighting, but I needed to like balance out the living room aesthetically. So yeah, fake plant that's from at home. So now we're gonna move to the patio. All right, hi guys, we are on the patio now. So these are obviously my outdoor plants. We are gonna start with this segment right over here. So we'll start with this guy. This is a variegated aloe plant. I don't know why, I just think this plant is so beautiful. Very low maintenance, really pretty. Also, I got these pots at Walmart. They were like super cheap, so don't forget about Walmart. Um, this guy next to it is some type of euphorbia, super cool. Reminds me of the booby cactus, kind of like similar vibes there. And then next to it, we have the euphorbia white ghost. This was a wish list plant for me. I love this thing. Got it in Tucson. Um, you can kind of tell the new growth. They have these like little tiny leaves on them. So that actually is super happy right now. This guy right here, I think, I know Sansevieria has been reclassified as Dracaena, but you know, just go with it. Um, this is obviously new growth. So that was super exciting to see. And then I believe, honestly, to the left of that, I don't even know what that thing is. I just know the needles on that are insane. So it's just a very respectable plant because of that. It's grown a lot too, like all this thick new growth is up there. Um, this guy, super dangerous, but super cool. Look how the new growth is just standing like right up. It's insane. Some type of rat tail cactus. That thing will stab you, so definitely be careful. It's also pretty thirsty. I water that thing about every week. Um, down below, we have some type of big aloe plant. You can see the new growth coming out the top there. Super cool. Um, this guy is honestly insane. This is one of those um, Apuntii, as I believe. I have no idea. I had it underneath like the shaded part, so maybe that's why it kind of grew a little funky, but I honestly like it even more for that. So, super cool. This guy is some type of agave. When I tell you these spikes on the end, like those will spike all the way into your finger, like a finger prick at the doctor. I have had that happen to me like five times now, so really pretty but dangerous. I'm gonna come around here and we're gonna go on this bottom row. So um, to be honest I got this at a specialty cactus place. I don't even know what that thing is. I feel like it might be one of those plants that when it blooms it smells like um, rotting flesh if you know, you know what I'm talking about. I think it's that species, I'm not sure. This guy I got at the Desert Botanical Garden. It's like a, I honestly don't even know what that is. I did notice it has something here. I don't know if that's a bloom or an offshoot or what, but I noticed it the other day. This guy is to the right of it. It's a rainbow cactus. This has grown so much when I got it. I think it's like this tall. This is all new growth. And this is insane. I don't know if you can see the top of that. Um, it is just the biggest cactus. Uh, my best friend in Georgia actually got this one as well, too. So pretty cool. And then this guy is adorable. This is a Apuntii, but to be honest, if you even think about touching this thing, the fibers in here will get inside of your fingers and microscopic. It is so painful, but she is cute. And then to the right of that, we have a Euphorbia. It's like a ruby rose or something, but I'm also probably making that up. Pretty cool, and it gets really nice sun stressing. And then this guy, honestly, aesthetically, I love it, but this is actually not like prickly, it's really soft, so super cool. And I have no idea why it's about to like grow like this. It might be one of those rat tail ones, I'm not sure, but very respectable. And the fact that there's like three of them is super cute. Then we'll go over here to my small but mighty bonsai collection. I actually got these from the same seller. I got one of these, I've had this for a long, long time. Um, I know it needs to be pruned, but honestly, I'm just letting it go I'm kind of wild. It was indoors, but ever since I've taken it outdoors, it's just so much happier. So that's my biggest tip for bonsai, but also water them daily, especially if you live in Arizona. Do not forget that. 
and then over here that guy's a ficus this is a juniper i did a big pruning on him kind of accidentally he used to be much longer but that's okay um, when i water this this also fills up and so a man can go fishing and just live his best life so pretty cool setup and then lastly over here we have these guys that like a little bit more sun so i don't know what this is very cool i've called uh i've heard it called like the front of the call up cactus which is kind of um, you know self-explainable but this guy actually snapped in half right about here and i was able to just repop him up use a stake so cactus are the definition of resilient um this guy i don't even know what this is but right when i saw it this is the same specialty cactus spot um i just had to get it the color is just insane it's literally like neon silver blue it's gorgeous i don't know if it's happy um but it's not dying so that's good and then this is a um, euphorbia as well i think it's like a mark or something r mark really pretty and just like the color on here is gorgeous super easy plant um, with the euphorbias though i do water them probably every two weeks once a week much more than cactus like this per se hi guys welcome to my room this is going to be the last area of the apartment so we're going to start with the hanging plants that we have on our right um, this long one is actually much longer than this i've got it tied up a little bit but this is a philodendron um, heteresium brazil super pretty really long very happy um, and then we also have a beautiful syndapsis argirius this guy's super full super lush uh, my biggest tip with these is do not let them curl up. If you let them curl up, you're going to lose the volume at the top. Um, and I have an example of that right over here. This guy needs to be watered. Please do not judge me. But you can see that these leaves are starting to curl. They're not super flat. This is when you have balding at the top of the plant. Um, these really don't like to dry out. So be better than me. Don't let them dry out. Uh, but this is probably the goal. This is a nice full one. So the second I think it's dry, I water them. They're kind of divas in that regard. All right, guys. So this is my Hoya table. This is the last area in my apartment. Um, Hoyas are honestly some of my favorite. They do make you learn the value of patience because they take forever to bloom. But starting over here, we have the Hoya Wayetii tricolor. You can see there's three different colors in there. Pink, green, cream, white gorgeous hoya super easy they start to trail really nicely this one to the left is hoya costophylla this was a wish lamp plant for a long time um, quite literally took me probably six months to get this new leaf but i think there's a new leaf on the way somewhere in there it's going to see um, but hopefully but super cool plant looks really nice when it's sun stressed as well and then we can go up right here this is a hoya pubicalyx i believe um, I like this one just because it gets super dark. I mean, these are coming in like almost black purple. Looks insane. Um, the, I forget what you call these little vine things, but they're probably like two feet long. It's insane. So I got to figure out a trellis situation there. Um, right here in the center, we have this gorgeous plant. This is, um, I'm blanking on this, Hoya. There's like a K, like Eskimo. I honestly don't know. Really pretty though. Um, if we get a close-up of that, just the silver is just very striking. Really fast-growing Hoya. It is a little bit thirstier of a variety, so watch out for that. Um, and kind of on that same wavelength, this is a Hoya Matilde. I find that this is a pretty fast grow as well. It's actually got some speckling on it too, which is kind of cool. Really cute Hoya. I really like that guy a lot. And then right up here, we have my Hoya Macrophylla. This is a gorgeous plant. Um, R.I.P. This had, used to have a bloom somewhere on it. I knocked it off, so be gentle with your Hoyas. Um, this is one of the newest leaves, so it's super cool. I love this plant. had it for quite some time. And then my last Hoya is going to be over here. This is also a Hoya pubicalyx. Um, this one's a little bit more like sun bleached. I'm not sure if it's malnourished or something, but um, we love her anyway. And this is my oldest Hoya. It has not bloomed yet. And then we can move up to the top. So we got a couple things going on here. Um, we can start with this guy, which is crazy long. Um, I don't know if you guys can see all that length, but really nice. This is a string of dolphins, bananas, something like that. Um, moment of silence for this little macrame, super cute. And this is actually reclaimed wood. 
um, from forest fires up in California. So really cool local artist. And then this guy is a Hoya Wayetii. This is just the green variety, super pretty. You can see the sun stressing on here too. It gets like almost like a dark purple, really gorgeous plant, very low maintenance. And then at the very, very top, I got this plant recently at Sprouts. Um, really gorgeous. It's got pretty nice variegation. I believe this is a Snow Queen. This is my first poppers ever, um, which is kind of insane. Big, big collector. And then last but not least, this is a broken piece from my Euphorbia. I believe it's growing. I'm not sure. It also hasn't died, so that's that. And yeah, I think that's the end of my plant tour. So thank you guys for sticking along. I do apologize. It's the first video, so hope it worked out. Thank you guys.